Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Palmetto Cats Live. We're going to talk about Terminal Tackle tonight. Let's get Terminal. Terminal. <laughs> I'm a dork. But uh, good evening, everybody. It's been a great, great, great weekend. I've uh, been blessed all weekend, and the blessings just keep coming. So uh, welcome tonight to Palmetto Cats Live. We have a great show lined up for you tonight. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope you've enjoyed the, the real talk. I hope you've enjoyed the Rod Report. And tonight, we're going to get terminal with it. So uh, I have some guests on tonight. Uh, I know I said last time that I wasn't going to, but uh, I just felt the spirit lead me to invite some people to come on. And uh, we got some people that you don't normally see. And we got some that you will recognize. So, um, you know, we're going to get started here in just a minute. Tonight's show is all about terminal tackle, like I said. Well, what does that include? Well, for the purposes of this show, this includes everything but your rod and reel. Okay. Everything you use to catch a fish or a catfish in particular, but your rod and reel. So your main line, your leader line, your swivel, your floats, your hooks, your rattles, your swivels, uh, whatever you put on a line to catch a catfish. That's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about different brands, just like the other shows. If you look in the description section of this uh, broadcast, you will see links to uh, to some of this equipment. And, and my guests are coming on. And unlike the other two shows, I'm not exactly sure what everybody uses because it's a lot of different gear. So uh, I'll try to do my best and put screenshots up and put links to things that they're using. Uh, because again, the people that are coming on, I consider uh, above average, semi-pro or pros at catfishing. And so I want you to value what they say. We don't all have to agree on what's best. I can already tell you I fish with something different than most of these people that I have lined up. The other thing is I want to say thank you to my Boom Squad members. They're back here. I'm finally getting my act together, guys. I got some vinyl up on the board. We'll have our YouTube channel of the week right here, and then we'll have our Super Chats right there. So uh, I'll be writing those on when they come in. Welcome to everybody in the stream. We got 65 people in here already. Let's get cranking. Also, if you have questions about any of the gear they're using, go ahead and put that up. All right. We're going to start off with Mr. Jimmy. What's up? <laughs> How you doing, Kevin? Or Jim. Jim. Sorry, you got Jim up Jim, there. Jimmy. It's Jimmy. Everybody calls me Jim. <laughs> He's uh, not only a YouTuber with fishing and gear, but he has a company called TangentDrifters.com. And we kind of alluded on the last show that we'll be talking about this. So why don't you show us – uh, go ahead and show us your, your weight, and then you can talk about the okay. other things you use. Okay. So this is my drift sinker. Uh, we, it comes in different sizes, and we sl we've been slowly expanding the sizes that we've been making. We started with a 2.5, and a lot of guys, a lot of old-timers were like, that's too heavy. We need lighter. So we come up with a 1.5, and that's actually been our best seller so far as the 1.5. Um, we have a four ounce that I just put on the website today and a six ounce will be coming later because guys who fish out in the James River and different places, they need heavier sinkers. So the way I designed this um, and the reason I kind of made one was because I didn't like the shipping on a lot of them. It was taking me a week to get these things. And so I figured, you know, I would just make them myself and started using them. And a lot of guys were like, hey, man, those are pretty good. You ought to start selling them. So the way I make them, I make them with a very small bead. It has a, it's actually bird shot. It's really small, like I guess magnum bird shot, and it makes it very flexible. It have been pretty easily, and uh, it's um, a snag release head on it. So what happens is if it hangs up, that release head has a ten pound pressure release on it, and it right. just it release off of there. And that's kind of unique to yours. I hadn't seen that, and you know I hadn't seen everything so. <laughs> <laughs> and the, re the reason I did that was, you know, you know, you know, the, when you go out there to drift fish, it's a process, you know, to get your, to get baited up, to get on the line you want to run. You know, we're running, a, we, we don't just go with the wind. We're using, you know, running the channel line or certain, <clears throat> certain depth or something like that. And uh, you get on that line, you get set up. Sometimes it's 20 minutes, you know, to get your baits out, 
and then you get a drift sinker that snags up, you got to stop. You know, you got to repeat that whole process. So with this one, you can just tighten the drag. It just, you know, it takes quite a bit of force. It's not just going to come loose. You know, it's not going to, the slightest little thing's not going to pull it loose. Uh, you know, it takes a good You have to try to be breaking it. You have to want to break it off, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not just going to, you know, it is still anchor your boat. You can hang this thing up and it's going to anchor your boat until, you know, you tighten your drag and you pull it and then it'll come loose. And it's funny you said that because that's kind of like where the anchors are going now. You know, they have the, the zip tie on them so you can pop them and not yeah, lose them. Exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. Except you probably you can't get that back, but it's better than losing the hook, the bobber, all the other stuff too. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Yep, you're right. So what kind of main line do you use? Well, I'm using slime line. It's a uh, sixty pound mono, and I was using Big Cat, and nothing against Big Cat. Never had a problem with Big Cat. Uh, just wanted something different. Um, every time I tried to get not Big Cat, Big Game. Every time I tried to order the Big Game, I never could find green. So. I uh, switched to slime line, and the first thing I noticed is this line is really, really smooth. It's, I mean, it's, it feels like silk almost. And when you have it on your reel, you can see it doesn't get that memory as bad. It doesn't coil up as bad. So that's what, uh, what pound? What pound test are you using? That's a uh, sixty. Oh wow! Okay. And uh, actually, I just use sixty on the main line and on the on the leader. I just run sixty straight through. Okay. And, and what I, else you I got like back there? Heavier. I like a little bit heavier line, you know, because we mainly drift fish a lot. And, you know, when you do get snagged up and stuff, it just gives you a little bit, you know, extra strength there if you want to try to, you know, get loose. Right, right, right. Cool. I see you got some swivels back there. Yeah, we got some swivels. I'm just pretty much using – Um, let me show you how this is. It's just pretty much eagle laser sharp. It's one out yeah, swivel. Yeah, eagle claw. Yeah. Yep. And the way where that goes is on my drift rig, it just ties it all together. Now, a lot of guys use like a three way swivel. I just put the sinker and come up this way with it like that. And uh, never had a problem. Uh, tested it on a 75 pounder, didn't bend it, you know, no problem. Because a lot of guys, they, they're like, I don't use a, I don't like a swivel like that. I never had a problem with it. And then you got a little bead on there. What's that? Tell them about that. Mm -hmm. I do have a bead on there. Um, I got it off eBay. It was pretty expensive, the brand. I don't even really remember. But they call it a knot protector, and it does glow. Does it help? Does it attract the fish? I, I'm not sure. It looks cool, though. <laughs> and, and that's what was that, three-inch peg float you got? Three-inch peg float, yep. And I'll pair the three-inch peg, peg float usually with a non-aught hook. And then if I go with, like, a six-aught hook, I'll go with a two-and-a-half-inch peg, you know, for, like, a lighter bait. But that'll hold, I mean – I put a yeah. whole brim on this thing before, and that peg float will hold a pretty big, you know, heavy bait. All you really got to do is hook your bait on there, throw it in the water, and just some tension, and you can tell if the hooks are not, you know, it's not really that hard to do. And then your hook. I think you use the same hooks I use. Yep. This catfish friend, and I use the knot on it. And uh, I was using Eagle Claw, you know, when we first started, like a lot of guys were going to Walmart and just trying to figure out some stuff to put together. And we slowly learned, I slowly learned that that stuff don't, you know, when you can do a big catfish, it don't hold out that good. But uh, I got onto the nine knot the catfish friend. I seen uh, Hagen Grubbs using them on his channel. And uh, as soon as I used them, I could tell they're a lot thicker hook. And it's got a wide gap. So you That's can what I like them about it. Up. Yeah, it's got that wide gap, and you can get a, a pretty good piece of bait on there. And the uh, and those are actually um, tackling cats hooks. And they're, oh, uh, they're, they're branded catfish. Yep. It's the same okay. hook. Okay. Um, the owner of catfish is a guy named Chris. He's a super nice guy. Uh, yeah. I talked with him on the phone and he, he will just talk to you for hours about fishing. He's just a really down to earth person. <laughs> yeah, he sure will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause he, he told me he knows you. <laughs> yeah. He said, yeah, I, I like Kevin on Pat Metal Cats. He's a good guy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, cool. Anything else you got to show us? Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, it's just a pretty basic rig. And um, I actually I sell this rig and I started selling it kind of as just another item to sell on my website. But I'm selling more rigs than I am packs of drip sinkers now. You know, it's a lot of new guys coming mm -hmm. into the yeah. catfishing, catfishing world and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And what my hope is they'll get this rig and they'll just say, hey, it's pretty simple. And they'll just mm -hmm. be able to do it themselves more as a teaching aid than anything. But 
You know, this is pretty basic. I just use uh, improved clinch knots on the hook. I've never, never had one give away. You know, a lot of guys like the snail. I watched your video with how to tie the snail. I still not, I'm still not that great at it, <laughs> but still just an old school clinch knot. And uh, that's pretty much it. You know, pretty simple. Yeah, and so so what what that uh, Kevin does here you go. Here's a question: Does he run the bead at the hook? Yeah, he does have the bead yeah. on the hook. Right at the hook, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I so, just uh, recently started doing that, and I mean, I don't know if it really helps or not, but the 75 pounder I did catch, it did have the bead on it, so I don't. Know. <laughs> a 75 pounder, I guess, would convince you to keep doing anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was dancing a rain dance when he hit, so I'm gonna hit a dance a rain <laughs> dance. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. And so those of you who are new and, you know, are, somebody yeah. said they're going to take notes and I, that's awesome. That's an honor for you to say that. But, uh, you know, this is like this is advanced stuff. I guess I would say it's advanced. Um, you don't need all of this stuff. So I'm prefacing the whole show with you don't need all of this stuff. All, exactly. And I have somebody coming in that's going to talk about that later. But uh, this is stuff to just make your life easier, I think. Um, yeah. especially that sinker, you know, when you drag a lot, like he was saying, you know, if you have, you know, one of these other sinkers, uh, up here, like right above my, my board right there, that'll get you hung up a lot. So, uh, it just makes your life a lot easier, but Jimmy, I appreciate it. Uh, sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. It's always nice to have you on the show, man. <laughs> okay. And uh, I appreciate you asking me and whenever the next one is. Let me know. Yes, sir. All right. Y'all check out SantiDrifters.com and Fishing and Gear YouTube channel. Go watch him. He caught a 75 pounder on a chicken breast. It's actually <laughs> Fishing and Gear Outdoor Entertainment. That's the whole name. I just say Fishing and okay. Gear because it's a mouthful. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. All right, y'all. See you later, okay. Jimmy. Thanks, Kevin. Bye-bye. All, right. All right. I got someone in here that's been hot on the fishing scene. Uh here recently i've been catching a lot a lot of fish and i'm normally at work and he's putting this stuff on facebook so uh i wanted to bring him in he, he's already smiling because he knows who he is <laughs> mr matthew anthony welcome sir <laughs> hey kevin <laughs> man you are putting in some fish this year aren't you Ah, uh, it's been a good year yeah I, I i'm sitting at work and uh you know i'll i'll uh just pull up facebook you know like we all do just to see what's going on for on a short break and i see a flathead and i see a blue and i see four uh, what, what do you say flathead number five <laughs> yeah that's why I'm able to have something to look at i guess it works i enjoy looking yes, at sir. I'm doing. that's right well hey why don't you share with us your terminal tackle what you use well i don't really know where to start at um Start from the hook. Like I say, I just I got a rig tied up here. All right. I, if you can see, I <clears throat> I use a eight out gamma katsu. Gamma katsu. Mm -hmm. uh, inline circle hook. If you can see it. I yes, sir. We can that. see it. Yeah. Uh, got it on my fifty pound. Leader, I use a snail knot, you know, easy snail knot on my hook. What size is that hook, if you don't mind me asking? That's an eight out. Eight out, all right. This is eight out about all the time. And then um, three inch float. I like the orange. I don't know why, but <laughs> I, buy, <laughs> I buy them. You're like line. me. I like the green, so <laughs> I like orange, but it's just I buy them by the hundred online. Right. And uh, then I come up here and I do something a little different. Uh oh. Go for it. I'm trying to get it off of there. There you go. I'm trying to figure out where I'm at on this camera. Yeah, it's I opposite. Can... If you go to the right, you move to the left. <laughs> anyway. I cut from the hook up here I, at 24 inches. I got a, about 24 inches. I've got one swivel. Some people use a chain swivel here, but I'm just using a regular swivel. I ain't never had no trouble with that. Right. You now come on up here about, I don't know, anywhere from six to 10 inches more, and I put a three way. Oh, okay. 
and then you know that's where I attach my weight, whatever I use as far as mm-hmm. weight goes. Uh, I got a mold that makes these like this. Okay. See it? I can make yes, sir. three, three fours and fives if I'm anchor fishing. Uh, you know, I just put it on the three way. You know, with this, I forgot what to call this thing. Snap or a snap, snap swivel or something like that. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. get these. Off, uh, I think I got these off eBay. I forgot the name of. They they fit that sinker. That's kind of what I use when I'm anchor fishing. Right. So you do something unique. You go. You kind of have two leaders. You go from um, the three way to a leader to a barrel swivel, and then to your uh, your Santee rig. Yeah, that's I, interesting. Well, the reason I started doing that was was when I was drifting. Sometimes you know this thing wants to twist up a lot. For some reason, though, that three way wasn't you know getting, letting, letting it twist like it should. Once I added that swivel, I ain't had no more trouble with it. Right. All tangled up. Uh, I use the same rig, drifting or anchor all the time. <clears throat> I make my own drift weights. Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's about a two ounce right there. How do you make that? Is that just a heat shrink? Yeah, that is, uh, well, I brought one in here that I hadn't put no heat shrink on so you could see, but okay, it's a, like a one eight. Oh, I got you. Ounce sinker. Mm-hmm. And I've got them on a piece of like a masonry cord. And then I've got a swivel at the top and I put in, in the heat shrink. Okay. Like that. And you know, I don't fish, you know, in current a lot, don't drag in no current. So in the lake, like Wiley, that works pretty good. Yeah. I don't have I don't have a lot of trouble with that getting hung up on Wiley. Now if you uh, bend that, will it keep its form? Well, not right now, but after I drag it a little bit. Right. I've got my rods, I should have brought one in, I didn't think about it. But after you drag it a while, it'll start looking mm-hmm. like that. Okay. It, it, uh, Nick it, Mayberry asked what would be a good all around hook size to start out with. And I would say it just depends on the kind of fish you're trying to catch. Um, you know, if you're trying to catch channel cats, you can go, you know, a four or five aught, uh, even smaller than that. I've caught, I catch channel cats on brim hooks all the time. Um, you know, if you're trying to go for trophy size catfish, you know, you, it also depends on, uh, depends on what kind of bait you're running. So, uh, really, it's just up to what kind of fishing. Would you agree with that? Yeah, but <clears throat> most of the time I use the 8 all, and most of the mm-hmm. time I'm using a big piece of bait. Uh, right. I don't, I'm not fishing for the smaller <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but for someone, who's, for someone who's just starting out, you know, and they want to know what kind of hook to get, you know, you know, it depends on what kind of fish they want. If they want to go out and start for monsters right away, you know, they need something like yours, an A dot. Yeah. Okay. But you, you cut your bait size down and your hook size down, and you're probably mm-hmm. going to, you know, a lot of fish, a lot of numbers. Right. But if you're going after, the, you know, the bigger stuff, I, I like to stay away from the smaller fish if I can help it. So right. I go with the bigger <laughs> fish. Eliminate some of them. Yeah. I don't even I don't even want to catch a channel cat if I can have it. <laughs> gotcha. You, know, your bait. you like them big old flatheads. Oh, yeah. Flatheads or blues. Either one. I like the flatheads best, but sometimes Did, I can't find them. I, I hear you, man. Does So does the uh, brand, the leader line, the main line matter to you? Well, I use uh, Berkeley Big Game. Berkeley Big Game? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've been using it for seven or eight years, and I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, it's uh, good. It's good line. It's good line. I use that dark green that they got for my main leader sticky. Mm-hmm. But on my rods, I just run twenty five. But now, you know, I ain't fishing in heavy current or, or, or you know real bad hanging areas either. And that twenty five is pretty hard to break, especially if you're yeah. drifting. Yeah. You can get it on that 25 don't break too easy. 
for me anyway. Yeah. I got but, you. Uh, I use 6,500, you know, reels all the time. And, you know, they got pretty smooth drag. So you drag smooth, that 25 will land about anything. I That's think. right. That's right. Around. Best Why best rig for – yes, sir. Best rig for bank fishing. Again, it's all about the waters you're fishing. If you're fishing current, if you're not fishing current, um, really you did, you have you need a little bit more information for us to give you a definitive answer. Uh, for instance, I went out on Friday night and we were camping and we fished from the bank and we had the wind blowing in, no current. Um, but I used a, a, a five ounce coin sinker holding down a Santee rig and we caught fish all day, all night on, on that rig but I wasn't in any current. So, and thank you for the super chat, Michael. I appreciate that. I'm going to try to spell your name. Uh, C-U-E-L-L-A-R. Cool. <laughs> well, Mr. Anthony, I really appreciate you coming on. We hadn't met officially yet, but uh, I'm going to consider this a meet. <laughs> I really do enjoy watching watching your youtube channel especially when you got crazy boaters coming by <laughs> and crazy jet skiers <laughs> I hard to put that on there but you know how do you get aggravated them so long you can't help out there <laughs> yeah especially if you fish as much as you do man <laughs> i've been more that's run over my stuff it, that's not the first time oh i don't it's doubt just, it man i don't doubt it, it just gets, uh I feel on wiley and I thought maybe if you post a few videos that maybe so many people down there saw it, then when they go out on the water, they might think why you know, they, they, they might stop, right? <laughs> they get to go around, give a little bit of room. Well, hey, I really appreciate you coming on. I got a whole a whole queue of people waiting to go. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. We got another guest in here. Uh I tried to get him on the show a while back, and it just didn't work out. So I have the pleasure of having Mister Fishing with Billy on the show tonight. How you doing, Billy? Hey, doing good. I just got done fishing in fifteen mile per hour winds from the bank. So I. Woo! Am <laughs> Come on. Isn't that your favorite? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had my camera rig blown over a couple of times too, so. I don't, oh, I don't man. know how footage is going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, what you got for us today, Billy? Well, um, I was going to show you my rig, my rigging. Okay. Oh. Now, I'm, I guess I, I have to say this first thing. I am sponsored by Akuma Fishing, and okay. I am part of the promotional staff for Team Catfish. Uh, just to let you know. But I, I keep things as simple as possible. Well, let me let me go ahead and make a point to that though. You are you say you're sponsored by these people, but you wouldn't. I hope you hopefully you wouldn't accept the sponsorship if you didn't believe in the product, right? Yeah, I I would. You, you know. So so I didn't want people to like just discredit your what you're going to show them based on what you just said. You know, yeah, uh, it, you know, it, if you're just be, just just being a disclosure. That's right. That's right. Akuma. I, yeah. it's not um i can use other products other other companies here if i wanted to it's not like you know i can only use akuma so they're good i, me. I like them i like dave dave's the the guy behind it all um, hey dieter melhorn said you're his hero <laughs> <laughs> so i i just i guess you call this a slide sinker rig or you know sinker all slide, yeah. is hook leader line swivel a little bead or something to protect protect the knot from a, a sinker slide, or I, you know, put a sinker on here. You could have a flat uh, no roll sinker. I used to use flat no roll sinkers until Rig Wrap decided to give me a bunch of their uh, their uh, sinker slides, which you can remove from the line without cutting your line. Yeah, yeah, without cutting the line. So now I can like just free line. A bait if i wanted to and i can put it right back on and put it back on the bottom uh yeah that's i have a few of those and they sell them at walmart now actually all the team yeah. catfish stuff they sell at walmart yeah well this is rig wrap the green is rig wrap uh, the that's right but they sell that at walmart too yeah yeah, yeah they do 
Um, the this you know an eight dot team catfish double action circle hooks. The one main reason why I like these hooks is because the straight shank. So when okay. you nail it properly, it create you know when when you pulls it, it makes the hook like do a trigger action when it's in the mouth of the fish. When you have an eye that's a little bit bent, like some of the other types. It doesn't have that kind of trigger action. It just pulls it straight back. While this gives you just a little bit of extra trigger action to get whatever. And I mean, you don't have to, you know, get just Team Catfish. There's others like Mustad and other hooks have that straight shank on them, mm-hmm. where you can snell it like this. And I, I like the Team Catfish. I I was converted to Team Catfish from Ty Conkle. He was the FB Catfish Guide or whatever. That's what okay. he is. He's also pro staff with them. You know, I, I used to use uh, Gamagatsu hooks, and every time I hooked like a flathead, it always hooked it in a really, really weird spot. Oh, okay. My cat is coming here to say hi. <laughs> That's all right. My dog's doing the same thing. <laughs> well, yeah, That's the, live TV, man. They'd always get hooked in weird places, but then when I use these Team Catfish hooks, for whatever reason, it always gets them in the corner of the mouth. And I seem to hook more fish, hook more uh heads with it so and i use eight aught i've been considering moving up to their 10 aughts which i actually wow. have on my desk the the new 10 aughts which are just a little bit bigger than the eight okay i've been considering that uh i really i have this on my bank fishing rigs i have some 12 foot longitudes i put these on there because when you're Trying to fish from the bank and trying to cast a really long ways, you want more of the hook in the fish. So you want like a 10 aught or 12 aught hook in your makes bait. Makes sense. Uh, so, so you don't throw the bait off. Yeah, so you don't throw the bait off. Because I've done that plenty of times with the 8 aughts. Even from my boat, I you know, I, I hook it as barely as, you know, show the most amount of hook, barely have it hooked in and end up throwing the bait like a mile away. Gotcha. But I do have another rig here. It's the same thing. Well, what before you move on, what uh what kind of leader line and main line do you use? Uh this one has a rattle. You're talking about I think someone was talking about rattles earlier. I I don't normally use rattles and I still haven't figured out if they do better or not, but it's the same rig with with a rattle on it. Gotcha. What kind of main line do you use? Uh I've been testing out something that Akuma has, and it's been working out pretty good. This soft steel, ultra pe- premium monofilament. I haven't seen that. Hold that up again. Yeah, it's thirty pound line, and it kind of reminds me of big game line. Soft steel. Yeah, it's just it's something they they I think they bought this company, um, and added it to their lineup, or they are partnered with it. I'm not I'm not fully sure. But soft steel, 30-pound monofilament. I always use 30-pound on everything. If I'm fishing from the bank, I go to 40 or 50-pound. We got okay. a lot of tuber muscles around here. Gotcha. So I go with a bigger And as you uh, use the same leader line, or is that just something different? Uh, the leader line, I've been using – what have I been using? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> oh, oh. You I sound like me that. when it comes to hooks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Slime line. I went to uh, our local place, Big Fish Outfitters. They sell a lot of big fish stuff. And everything else was sold out. I wanted to get like 80. I, I kept having I, I kept having big flatheads break 50-pound leader line over and over again. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to upgrade to 80-pound leader line. And I couldn't find any except for that. that um, I think it's the slime line 80-pound leader line. So that's what I bought. And that's what I've been using, the 80-pound. And it got broken too. So the flatheads have been running me into wood. So I've had to reevaluate that spot. And when I did, <laughs> I did pull in like a, I think it was like almost a 30 pounder there. Yeah, I saw that video. I was happy for you. Yeah. Finally got oh, him or, oh. or got one. It didn't have it didn't have any of my hooks in it. So there's another <laughs> fish there that have my hooks in their mouth. But uh, you know, that that piece of wood, they just I guess they kept running right into it and rubbing the line and breaking yeah. it. Cool. Uh, yeah. Hey, Billy, I appreciate it, man. I, I'm glad that uh, we were able to work this out. And even though it's not for a whole episode, that yeah. we got you on for about five minutes, man. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it was nice talking with you as well. Yeah. All right, guys, go check out Fishing with Billy uh, on YouTube and uh, give him a give him a uh, 
a couple comments. Let them know you were there. And All right, sure Billy, take care. Video to help him out. <laughs> say that. Say that again. Like this. Like this. Like yeah. Hit the video. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. <laughs> All right, Billy. Take care, man. Yep. You too. All right, I got a father-son duo up next. We all have seen him before. Fish Seeker TV. How's it going, y'all? Fin Seeker, sorry. I don't know why I said fish. <laughs> going good, Kevin. How you doing? Good. And we also got Dinks Outdoors. Hey. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for coming on, guys. Show me what you're working with tonight. Uh, we don't have a real fancy setup. I guess starting with our line of like the like the other guys, we do use the slime line. It's not uh, read, readily available around my my area around here, uh, so I have to order it. There's nowhere close I can get it. So when I don't have any of that, I just go with the Berkeley Big Game. I mean, it's tough too. We've landed fish up to 50 pounds with this, and uh, uh, if I use it, I'm using the 40 pound main line, and then for my leader. I will go with a 60 pound leader and uh, on my rig, we'll start out with our swivels. Uh, we get these at Dale's Tackle. These are rated for 220 pounds. Uh, we'll do a basic Carolina rig. I will, uh, I use a lot of no roll sinkers. Occasionally I will use a sinker slider. Where so we, show, hold that sinker up so they can see it. Uh, I know we all know what it is. but Yeah, it's just flat. It lays on the bottom. And uh, I use the no rows a lot in the uh, in the rivers and stuff where there's a lot of current. It just helps hold that bait down. Gotcha. And uh, we fish on the lake here where we fish. There's not any current most of the time. It's just a flood control lake. So we'll fish uh, bank sinkers a lot. And when I hook them up, I'll just use a sinker slider here. And they're quick and easy to attach. And if you need to up your weight, you can add, add another one to it or take it off, you know, so it's real easy to use. Uh, going down to my hook, we use Nocturnal Nation hooks. Uh, the majority of, of the time, I will use this hook right here. This is a 9 aught Eclipse. And uh, Eclipse. it's got a little bit of an offset to it. I don't know if you can see it on there or not. Yeah, I saw it. But what makes this hook a little bit unique is it's got a it's got a rubber sleeve on it right here. So when you snail that hook, you're getting a super grip right there, really tight, and it makes it just a little bit easier to tie. It's not slipping around on you. Uh, I won some of those on Catfish Weekly a couple months ago, and I've properly lost every single one. <laughs> uh, but like I said, uh, that's the hook I use 90% of the time. No, what, no matter if we're here in Kentucky or going to Alabama or wherever, it's a good gotcha. hook. Uh, if we we're using live bait, uh, we haven't done a whole lot of flathead fishing, but when we do, we will go with a hook that's a little bit bigger. It's got a little bit wider gap. Now this That thing is, looks serious, man. Yeah, this is a Nocturnal Nation pig sticker. This is a one of their most popular hooks. As you can see, the gap's a little bit wider. And it does have an offset hook on it right there, which makes now I have a question about those. Okay. I hate to interrupt you. I have a question, and it's the reason I hadn't tried them. Do you have to set the hook with those, or is it like a circle hook? It's just like a circle hook. I mean, okay. you don't have to set the hook at all. It'll set itself, and 90% of the time, it's going to get him right in the corner of the jaw right there. Awesome. Uh if I'm fishing, let's see, a lot of times in the warmer weather and up till about right now, we will uh, float our baits up. Uh, you'll see me using these Kirby rigs. All it is is a piece of wire about six inches long. Uh, it has a float in the middle. It's got two beads on each end. You can hear it rattle. It makes a lot of noise in the current and stuff. Uh, when we do go to the rivers and stuff, you will see me add a... a Another, what you call them to them, the little uh, whirly things. What do you call them, Kevin? A swirly things? A swivel? No, not the swivel, the little. Uh, oh, the rattles, versa rattle? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the rattles. And they'll give you just a little bit of extra. I like doing that in the river. But for the lakes here, uh, most of the time, this got plenty of rattle to it. And uh, they'll float your bait up. You can put a big old skip jack head on it and it'll float it right up. Mm. I got it. 
got one rigged up right here. People use those for redfish down here in in uh, Charleston. They're huge. They they got them. You they buy them by the pound. Yeah, this is my basic setup. Got about eight inches from the uh, swivel to the uh, float, then about six or eight inches from the uh, the float to the hook right there. Now, what do you think? Have you ever had one bend that wire? Because I I tried the the Kirby rig as it's as y'all call it, um, and I caught one fish on it, and it bent the wire in half. And I wasn't going to use it again because you know you bend metal, it gets weaker. Right. The only problem I've had with them breaking is when I'm dragging baits. If you're dragging through some nasty stuff, then uh, yes, it will bend and break. Uh, but something else I forgot to show you, we just started using these this year, the structure snakes. Well, mm -hmm. uh, they got a real thin diameter to them. They're about the size of a pencil. Uh, they pull through cover really nicely. And uh, I haven't lost near as many of these when I've had these tied on. Uh, this They come in, I uh, forgot, uh, one to six ounce. And most of the time we're using in low current situation, we're using about a three ounce. But uh, they pull through cover really nicely. And so far, I like them really good. So you got a question, or not a question, but kind of like a comment about the hooks. Sam Martin said, kind of worried about the grips, sun and rubber equals sticky. Do you ever have that problem on those hooks? I've never maybe that maybe that's what he's talking about. I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, I don't leave my hooks out in the sun though. Everything's pre-tied up. If I have to retie, everything's tucked away in my boxes out of the sun. But even just leaving them out in the sun, uh, in the rod holders, I mean, I've never felt anything get sticky on them. Awesome. Uh, welcome to the Boom Squad fishing with Big Mike. Appreciate it. All right, so you got your Santee rigs. Basically, looks like what you're running. What about your uh, any? I, I so swivels are kind of one of those things that I just pick up a pack at Walmart when I see them. Is that kind of the same thing with you, or do you do you buy us? You said you get yours from Dale's Tackle. That's right. Yeah, I get them at Dale's Tackle. Uh, the ones I've seen at uh, Walmart and stuff, I hadn't seen. Uh, how many pounds they're good for on the package so i was kind of leery about it so i just order these you can get them in bulk packages and it tells you exactly gotcha. what they're rated for gotcha all right so he was talking about mrc rods sorry not your hooks <laughs> gotcha awesome uh well, Braden, you got anything to add uh i don't think so <laughs> you don't think so so you agree with your dad's decisions on his terminal tackle yeah have you taught him anything? Uh, yeah, I teach him a lot. So what? What's the, what's the last thing you taught him? Uh, how to catch a big fish. <laughs> oh, okay. And how big was that fish? Mm, what's your biggest? About thirty-seven pounds. Blue or flat? Blue. All right, man. That's a nice fish, man. Yeah, we That's got out a couple hours before church this morning, fought the wind a little bit, and he put the only fish in the boat, so he outdone me this morning. Dang, man. Now, do you think that's because your dad wants to see you catch fish, or is it because it was your rod? Both. <laughs> okay, all right. So you gave your dad a little bit of credit. I like that. <laughs> he's hard to beat when those rods fold over. He's hard to beat to him. I'm not hey, as as I used to be. <laughs> he's smaller and more limber, right? <laughs> he sure is. <laughs> well, Braden and, and, and Jeremy, I appreciate you coming on. Check out Fin Seeker TV and check out uh, Dinks, uh, Dinks Outdoors, right? That's right. Yep. Two great YouTube channels. Um, I've been checking out Dinks every time you put out. I hadn't seen your newest video because it just came out. But uh, I love the ones when you're sharing scripture, man. Keep doing that. We need people doing that uh, your age because uh, they seem to tune out us older people. <laughs> <laughs> well, appreciate all right, you. Yeah. Guys, yes, sir. Y'all take care. All right. All right. Thank you. Awesome. I'm going to. Uh, before we go on to our next guest, who I'm really excited about, I'm going to put up my two new members here. I believe it was Catfish and Pappy. Fish and... Sorry if I spell it wrong. I'll get it right next time. And then, who 
Who was the other one? I'm sorry. Let me scroll back up. Fishing with Big Mike. Big Mike. Thank y'all so much. That means a lot that y'all would um, would do that. And uh, I just really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Uh, next guest. I've been watching his channel forever. Uh, well, not forever. The past couple months uh, since somebody mentioned him. And I, I love everything he does really down to earth. And I think he's going to be probably the best um, advice for new anglers. So I'm going to bring him up. That's peel and drag catfishing. How you doing, sir? Hey, how y'all doing out there? Doing good, man. What you got for us tonight? Hey, I wanted to show y'all for the guys that like to bait fish and everything like that. All right. It's been a, it's been a thing where people, they worry too much about catfish. But if you ain't <laughs> got the bait, if you ain't right. got the bait, you can't go catfish. So That's right. I live down here where we chase skipjacks. So I'm going to show y'all a, uh, Sabiki rig right here. Oh, okay. Yep. That's what we got going on. I got like a little five eight uh, piece of lead right there at the end on the swivel. Mm -hmm. And I got so when I'm running that, this is about I say 25 pound test line in between the Sabiki. And it's about six, five, six hooks on there. Mm -hmm. So when I'm out there fishing and I can feel that skipjack. They swirling around the, around this sabiki rig and thumping it and everything like that, and they really not biting it or anything. So what I will do is I run a I run a barrel swivel. Okay. And I run fifty pound test line, and now I run that foley spoon. Foley spoon. So what that it what that does it replicates. Another skipjack chasing bait fish. Okay, that's what that does. And so, how do you work sure. that sabiki rig for? Um, I fish. I fish straight down for white perch. We don't have skipjack here. Right. So, how do you work that right. sabiki rig for skipjack? I mean, it's the same principle and concept as you do it trying to catch perch. It's the same thing. They run in school, so you might catch two or three or four or five and skipjack. They about two pounds a piece. So you're fishing <laughs> in heavy current. You in heavy current like that. You definitely going to need some thicker line out there. You catch two or three of them like that. Mm -hmm. So what I do right there where the lead is at, it's a snap swivel. And what I do, I take that piece of lead and move it over and put that barrel swivel right there where that lead is and snap it in. So when it's running in the water, I didn't get all. When it's running <laughs> in the water, it's running like that, and this uh, foley spoon pops up in the air. So that replicates another skipjack chasing uh, minnows, yellowtails, what we call them down here, yellowtail, anything like that. So it gives you another edge on trying to catch them skipjack, and it works for me. And so, for anyone who's not aware of what a skipjack is, uh, it's a herring. And uh, it's some people call it the catfish candy. Uh, a lot of people swear it's the best catfish bait you can have where, where where they're available. Would you agree with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, whatever's available in your waters, that's what I'd use. But I'm down here on the Mississippi River, uh, Tennessee River, Cumberland River, Ohio River. We mainly use skipjack, gizzard shad, stuff like that, and such. But my Number one go-to bait will be King Jack. <laughs> All right. So, and you said uh, when we talked earlier, you said that you um, you keep your catfish rig simple. You want to tell me, tell us what right, that right, means? Right. right. I keep my catfish and rig simple because, like I said, people get too caught up in tackle. I don't like tackle. I, the less tackle, the better off I am. So I'm hook, line, and sinker. That's it. Uh, that's the way it's been. I've been doing it forever, but it works. But I mean, that's not discrediting nobody or anything like yeah. that. But me, mainly myself, I keep it simple. That way I won't lose a lot because I lose a lot of hooks and leaves. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> yes, sir. Justin yes, Fitzgerald asks, what size hooks does your sabiki rig have? 
Well, I think these size hooks is like a size two or three or something like that. That's, they're made by Eagle Claw. Okay. I think that's what they are, about this size right there. Okay. I mean, they, they perform pretty well. I haven't had a problem out of it. I learned this rig. Actually, I learned this rig from regular dude fishing the YouTube because we kid skipjack a lot together. So mm -hmm. one day we sit beside each other, catch, uh, fish with skipjack. And uh, I'm like, man, how are you keep catching fish and we using the same rig? And he showed me this rig right here. And ever since then, I just kept it with me. And like I said, you can add it to your arsenal to get on some fish. So let me clarify. Is that is that spoon on the back of your sabiki rig or do you run them yep. separate? It's on the back. It's on the back end. I'll show you. Oh, okay. That's, that, right see, that's something I hadn't seen before. I know it. Me either. That's, <laughs> what I want, that's why I wanted to share it. So what I got right here is this will be your sabiki. That'll be the end of it with that lid. That'll be your end of your sabiki right there. And it's got a snap swivel. Got a snap. Yep. A snap swivel right there. So when it runs in the water, it's just running by itself in line. It's just running in line. So once you move that, once you move that uh that lead over, you put that swivel you, on there. And you put that swivel on there. That's a whole nother ball game. Wow, okay. That's a whole nother ball game right there. And so they'll hit the spoon and the sabiki rig. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the whole point is to make You're that skip two rigs at once. something chase. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Because exactly right. I thought you said that you use the um, sabiki rig and then you use the spoon, which I've seen both of those, but just not in tandem. I run it there all. Y'all, that's, that's pro knowledge right there. Y'all got to take that together. and run with it. <laughs> I mean, you can use that for catching perch and everything like that. Like I said, mm -hmm. I had learned that from regular dude fishing because we catch a lot of skipjack together and everything. Right. So um, I just couldn't believe how many jacks he was catching. I wasn't catching them. We right there beside each other. And when he told me that, it stuck with me. And and let me tell you, that's an awesome rig to know right there. That's you awesome. You hadn't looked back since, huh? Uh, no, sir. I haven't. <laughs> I feel a, I feel a deep freeze up a full quick. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so you keep the the catfish uh rig simple uh and you fish current obviously if you're fishing mississippi yeah, river so what you current. said you said you're throwing a big weight 12 13 ounce weight sometimes i throw anywhere from a five five all the way up to 12 ounces man if i'm on the mississippi river i'm throwing anywhere from eight to 10 to 12 ounces of lead that's Good on the river God. <laughs> that's on the river. wow man uh justin said what size weight do you run on the sabiki rig Five eighths, and I just add to it to depend on how much current I got. If I got current, I add a lot more weight to it, and I just sit and bounce it up and down in the same spot. And that's how I get them. I don't do no no retrieving anything, just bounce oh, it up and down in the okay. same spot. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes, sir. And so, you know, with the with the big weights, you probably have to have big line. Yes, sir. I run about sixty anywhere from sixty five to eighty pound braid. I'm I'm sold on braid. Yeah, I mean that's a converse, that's a whole nother conversation, but I'm sold on so braid. So braid, braid, no, that's fine. So you're our first braid guy on tonight. So what do you rely on? What brand do you rely on? Well, uh, I I've used the reaction braid on um Amazon, everything like that. That's a good braid. I mean, you get about fifteen hundred by fifteen hundred yards for like fifty dollars, and that's perfect. And I use uh monster braid by monster rod holders, I use it. Made by Steve Douglas. Okay. And then leader line mono, I, um, yeah, I'm guessing. Leader line, straight Walmart, OmniFlex, whatever it's called, Berkeley, Zep whatever you Zepco want. Zepco OmniFlex, yep. <laughs> yes, sir. I use Zepco 50 pound mono, or uh, sorry, 50 pound Zepco OmniFlex until I lost a big fish this summer. And it wasn't the, it wasn't the line's fault. It was my fault. But you know yep. how that gets in your head. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, that's, hey. <laughs> That's what makes us keep going back fishing, you know. What? That's right. That's right. Search it that big one. Hey man, I appreciate it. Y'all check out Peel and Drag Fishing. If y'all hadn't seen his channel, real down to earth and catching some awesome fish. Hey, I want to tell you one more thing. I uh go ahead. I want to thank I want to thank Paula Smith 
I want to thank Chris Flores. I want to thank Steve Douglas for making this happen. Hey, we look for a haul, PDC. All right. Appreciate you. Y'all go check him out. Have a good night, sir. All right. I appreciate you too, man. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, before we go on to our next guest, I'm going to do my YouTube channel of the week. This guy is uh, really well known, but since we got a lot of new people in here, I want to make sure that you're not missing out on something awesome. Uh, this channel, I mean, you got catfish, you got bass, you got bluegill, crappy, whatever you want. And that's uh, Richard Jean, the green, oops. Again, I'm misspelling in front of a whole bunch of people. Green Machine. If you haven't found Richard Gene, the Green Machine, you're missing out on, number one, some great fishing and, and, and some great education. But you're also missing out on some awesome entertainment. The guy is, uh, well, I mean, he's a little nuts, but I think it's awesome. It's a good kind of nuts. He's got kind of an alternate ego or personality in there, and he really makes it interesting and catches some awesome fish and teaches you how to do it. Go check him out if you haven't. All right. Mr. Hook Catfish in the house tonight. Thank you for being so patient, brother. It's all right. No problem. <laughs> Y'all, I got so much pressure on me doing these kind of shows because I got so many people down here, and y'all can't see it, but they're just sitting there waiting on their turn. And I just, I'm so thankful that y'all are so patient and, uh, and number two, willing to come on the show. So that's all right. My little one was going to sleep, so she fell asleep. Mm -hmm. We're good. Awesome. Well, I won't stall anymore. Let's go. Let's see what you got. Um, like uh, like Peel and Drag just said. I mean, yeah, I keep it real simple too. But the only difference is, is you know, I'm in Northern Illinois, so you know, as far as flatheads, I specifically target them. You know, in the warmer months of the year. Gotcha. Um, so I I run two different types of rigs. You know, mostly what we run is Carolina rigs. Well, I do anyways. Mm -hmm. I got two different type of hooks right here. These are both team catfish. Those are the hooks that I, you know, prefer to each his own, you know, with hooks, um, whatever you find that you like. But this is a five out and then this is an eight. I use the fives for channel cats, you know, right there. Okay. I use the fives for channel cats and eight out if I'm targeting a, bi a bigger fish, you know. So, so yeah. talk about the channels because people, especially around my area, are thinking channel cats. Why do you need that big a hook? It's different where you are. Tell them. Yeah, we got some big channel cats. I mean, I, like last week and I went out, we, uh, I got, I think, 10 over 20 pounds. God, that's crazy, um, man. <laughs> we got some big ones, but I still, I just, I like those, those five odds, you know? I mean, I've caught 30 pound flathead with the five odds, but, um, I just, I just like them, especially in the colder months when they're being real finicky, that, uh, that five odds seems to be pretty good, you know, especially if, you know, because then you'll hook up on the, the 10 pounders and stuff like that too. But mm -hmm. they're a great hook. And then same with the with the hooks. When I'm when I'm targeting channel cats, I use a thinner rod. I use a smaller rod. This is a this is a uh ugly stick, you know, like kayak catfish uses the old forty yep. dollar and uh this is sixty five hundred. And I use braid for the channel cats also, which is a little bit different. Um bigger fish what? like fatheads. Blue cats, I like mono. Um, just, just a pr preference thing, you know. I just like the mono. The mono I use is this Andy Monster. This is uh, yep, fifty pound. <laughs> this is fifty pound. And what I found this year is I don't really need fifty pound. I mean, you you, you get snagged up, you can't even break it. You're just right. towing the boat around, and I could probably go to thirty next year, which I probably will. But that is the best mono. Like I've gone through a lot of different monos, and it's probably my favorite one. But uh, my leader line. This is what I found this year. I think I've seen it already a couple times. Slime line, yeah. Yeah, this is that. Uh, this is that heavy cover leader, and it seems to be good. But I went down to Tennessee, and uh, I I learned a lesson that um, you need eighty pound there. You really you really do. Um, I had a couple. I had a couple uh, heartbreaks down there. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you learn, you know, so, but yeah. Okay. So 
As far as blue cats, we do not have blue cats where I'm at. And uh, when I do target blue cats, in a, it, it's usually in a power plant. We have three power plants or a few power plants here that are stocked, and the blue cats are just getting outrageously big. But um, that's where I use a dragging technique, like a lot of people said. But these right here are <laughs> – Okay. The thing I like about these is I like, you know – I seen a couple guys today, but these ones see the top is full of air. My buddy made this, and the top is full of air. So this thing is gonna sit here, kind of, kind of perp, you know, kind of sitting straight up. But these are six ounces; they're a little heavier. Go back they're a little bit good. so they can see how long it is. It's about that long. They're just about six ounces. A guy actually made these. Uh, one of my buddies who fishes with me a lot, and. Uh, I really like them, man. I really like the way that they, they kind of sit. They'll kind of sit, you know, float. You know what I mean? Right. And, they'll and, dance. Yeah, and they work great. So I, I really enjoy those. But as far as the flatheads and blue cats, I use a heavier rod. This is a slime cat rod. I really like it. I like it a lot, actually. A um, little bit bigger reel, and. uh I don't know. I guess when I'm targeting channel cats, they're so finicky sometimes, especially in 38 degree water, that you just have to have that tip that that's barely, you know, they sometimes will just barely tap it. Do a lot of sturgeon fishing also, and those those fish will. I've been loving fish. those videos, man. I, I wish I could sturgeon fish. <laughs> yeah, those fish will kind of just look like a bluegill, and he's actually a 70, 80 pound, 90 pound fish. That's so. nuts, man. <laughs> Carolina rig, like everybody. All the only thing that I do different is I'll use a really short leader sometimes targeting flatheads, and uh, especially in heavy cover. That way, I they I don't give them room to to pull it back into that structure. And, um, unless I'm fishing, you know, more open water situation, I'll give them a little bit longer leader. But um, but yeah, with the with the with the dragging rigs, I I go really long with my leaders, mm. and. Uh, that's just because I I just I just messed around with it and I it seems to work so it's the way. I so do. we have a lot of maybe we have a lot of new people in here to to the sport. Um, tell them what a Carolina rig is because they've seen a Santee. Oh okay, simple, so simple. Um, yeah, we just got a I just got a leader here. I snow my hook, and then I got a leader twelve to sixteen inch, and then I got a this is a hundred fifty pound swivel to a sinker slide now these sinker slides best ones i found i don't know I, nobody could tell me different amazon 150 pound i believe they are i get enough for the year for about 16 dollars or something like that mm -hmm. i use coin sinkers um it doesn't matter really for me the sinkers because i fish a very small river called the fox river um average depth six feet deep four feet deep um it gets heavy current sometimes but i mean we're not fishing a massive river like the Mississippi all the time. Mm -hmm. But I also, I'm a guy that fishes a lot of different rivers. I fish the Wisconsin River. I fish the Fox River. I fish the Tennessee River. I, I travel. I, I love this. You know, I love catfish, so I'll go where they're at. Um, but this is a universal rig, man, this, this Carolina oh, yeah. rig. Yeah, One Carolina thing, rig is a go-to, and, yeah. and it's the only thing different from the Santee, if you all notice, is there's no float in the middle of the leader. That's pretty much yeah, it. Like I like what Peel and Drag said. I'm going to keep it real simple because, you know, I'm just trying to the, – the more I put on here, the more I can lose, especially fishing flatheads, man. That's my – number one target of catfish and and you know i was really getting and there's nothing wrong with it like he said there's nothing wrong with it um i was getting into it i was had having all the the cool terminal tackle and then i lost a, a rig and i lost another one my dad went fishing with me he goes you know every time you lose one you're losing ten dollars i said man i didn't even realize that <laughs> <laughs> well, i'll put that money into my into my, into my gas tank so i can go to a, a new river yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah one thing that i have learned also this is all a lot of what i've learned is all experience but um that that clinch knot that's what i use for my to to connect um that clinch knot i use an improved clinch knot so after i do the the clinch knot i i give it one more because that one more secures that that is not going to slip out because I have had that happen. When you get a fish 
putting a lot of pressure on it. I've had it actually uh, slip out on a big fish. And I, I have no – my knot didn't break. My knot slipped. So right. this year it's happened to me, and it's happened to a couple of my buddies. So when I when I tie that clinch knot, you know, I go eight, nine times, but then I give it an extra because it's security, you know. I've yeah, had it happen. I've had it happen. It's terrible when you when you lose the fish and you pull it up and you see that little curly tail because then right. you know I mean, yeah. you're not. I like to call them or not, but sometimes you know that, that I've just been doing that that clinch knot since I was a little kid, so it's just so yep. natural to just do that knot. What's your favorite bait for flatheads? It depends on time of year. In the fall, yeah. uh, what's abundant in the river is shad, man. And, man, I killed it on that shad this this fall. Um, but bullhead, bluegill, I mean, anything, you know. In the spring, I'll try to throw some big carp out there and stuff like that. But bluegill, cool. probably, I'd have to say bluegill. I mean, it's just so, so abundant. Northern Illinois, I mean, we got some giant bluegills. We got a lot of good bluegills. <laughs> Illinois anglers taking over Palmetto Cats chat tonight. <laughs> That's okay. I don't, know, I don't know what you guys are dealing with. We got, uh, I think it's like 30 degrees out. I was out Friday night, and my, my reels are already freezing up. It was it was almost 80 here today. Okay. They're already freezing <laughs> up. Ice all over my boat, but them fish uh, are biting. Cool, man. Well, hey, thanks for being on. Uh, no I, I really appreciate it, and thanks for coming on the show and, and sharing a little bit with us absolutely y'all go check out hooked catfish great youtube channel i'm sure most of y'all are already subscribed but if you're not go check him out catch his huge channel cats he's actually been nominated for big channel cat on uh the golden whiskers uh and then hey. catches flatheads and sturgeon and just all around good channel go check him out all right man thank you all right man take care bye-bye all right chad i forgot to show you man check it out Fishing with the Chad. <laughs> I wanted to support my brother. <laughs> All right. Uh, it was, I was going to get, I got setting hooks and crossing eyes, Mr. Ryan in here, but he's been popping in and out. I think he's having connectivity issues. We're going to have Mr. Cody, Kentucky catfishing. I love the shirt, brother. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> tell us about Tell us about what you're using. All right, guys. So we'll start off with the sinkers. I use two types of sinkers. I'll use the uh, flat bankroll sinkers. You guys see them in uh, fin sinkers. I use these a lot during the lakes and the river too. Or I'll use the disc sinkers. I like the disc sinkers when I know I'm going to be fishing heavy current because I can put more on there. Right. And adjust it out with that current stream. And then here lately I've started using these rubber beads I get from uh, Cabela's. And... Uh, I don't know. It feels like ever since I used when I was using the uh, plastic beads that they would bust on me sometimes when I was casting oh, okay. the rows. So these rubber ones, this little bit of rubber bead, don't ever bust on me, nothing like that. I don't have to worry about that no more. And then and some uh, people say like the hard plastic is is harder on the knot too. So yeah. if you're using them for a knot protector, you kind of you know not doing what it's designed to do. <laughs> like a double edged sword there. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, I just use the regular Eagle Claw Walmart swivels. Uh, don't really have no preference on those. That's what I use too. Yeah. And then uh, for, for leader line, I'll go with the uh, Eagle Claw brand. I'll either use 60 or 80 pound, just depending on which one they got in. I like I prefer the 80, but I get the 60 sometimes too. And then uh, hooks. I like the, uh, when I'm targeting smaller channel cats, I'll go with the Gamagatsu's dots. And then uh, when I'm throwing bigger baits, I'll use two different types of the team catfish like everybody uses. And then I'll use the um, Reaper hooks from Dale's Tackle, the uh, 10 aughts. And I love these hooks a lot. I use these a lot really during the wintertime when I'm throwing big, bigger baits. And then for mainline, I run the 30-pound uh, Berkeley big game. Or I'll also get the uh, Berkeley Pro Spec, the orange stuff off Amazon. But here lately, they've mm. been sold out of it. Yeah, somebody just agreed with the fishing with Big Mike said the plastic are always breaking on me. Yeah, I've never had one break on me, but um, but I, I don't know. Maybe I haven't used them long enough, but I just feel like they would cut your line. I think someone else said that too. Um, yeah, you end up and, the, and, and they won't even be there. Right. The um, the Berkeley is actually Walmart is starting to keep them and keep it in stock now. Yeah. And uh, I just went to mine the other day when. 
when my when Andy was out, Andy was out for like a month, so I had to get some line, and uh, I went in there and they had like twenty rolls of it, and I, I was good. I didn't buy all twenty because Berkeley. The good thing about Berkeley Big Game, y'all, is it's inexpensive, so you can get was a 300 yard spool for like six dollars yeah so uh, that's why a lot of people like it um the andy does come in the bigger spool but it's it's a one pound spool it's approximately 1600 yards and you get that for 50 bucks so it's actually a great deal you just have to buy 50 dollars worth up front so that's why people kind of turned off by it but yeah. uh, i love that i love that that berkeley is great too so what do that's you what pound test do you use for mainline, uh, if I'm bank mm. fishing, I'll use a uh, 40, and if I'm uh, boat fishing, I just use 30. Mainly when I I don't want to have to tug the boat around trying to break it off, I get hung up. So yeah, yeah, cool man. So you usually use a I think you usually use a a, a Carolina rig, right? Yeah, Carolina rig, and then sometimes uh, during the summer, I'll attach the little bitty peg floats on and float the baits up a little bit. So what size peg float do you use when you put those on? Three. I Three like inch? Ones. Yeah. Yeah, me too. That's cool, the, man. I have trouble with the when I use the smaller ones. that it, Sometimes it don't want to float the bait up, I feel like. But that's just me. Now, do, do you use the um, ones with the slit in it or the ones that are are whole, I guess you'd say? Hole with a little bit of peg at the end of it down there. So so you, so you they make, they make um, if you look right below you, in the in the in the stream you'll see that that peg float with the slit and then right above you um right there is the one without the slit yeah i use the ones without the without the slit in it just the little okay uh, hey gotcha cool man the does the uh how does the ones with the slit work with i've never used them so that's why i was asking i was thinking about it because there are times when i want to um when I want to suspend baits and yeah. that's the, that's the only type of fishing I do where I can't, you don't want to use a float because then they'll, they'll, you know, they're float and you <laughs> want to be suspending them straight under the boat. So I was thinking about getting those peg floats just for a couple of my rods um, so that I can take them off when I want to suspend baits um, because everything else I can, I can change in and out with those snap clips. Yeah. Like the coin sinkers, as long as I don't use anything in line. But even, I mean, Steve Douglas uses uh, no roll sinkers on suspended rods, so I don't see why I can't. Yeah. <laughs> but he so also drags sides. no roll sinkers too. Yeah. So those, uh, the only thing I would have a problem worry about with those slip ones, with the ones with the slit in, is if they would uh, pull out of there when you hook something or. Mm. Up. But I think that's why they had those two pegs, so you got two yeah. points of contact, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Yes, you got some people agreeing with you. Justin said Berkeley is what I've been using for 20 plus years. So you can't go wrong with that. No. Nope. Um, cool, man. Wait, well, do you have anything else to add before we go? Nope. I'm kind of just a simple, simple guy, Carolina rig, and I don't really get into the tackle very much. You know, like you said, it's almost $10 going out of the drain every time you lose yeah. one. There's a good point. I don't like the peg floats with the slits. They come off unless you tape them. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. But, you know, I do keep electrical tape. So you just gave me a tip, Squirrel. So thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> I think that's uh, what Steve Douglas does. So I've seen some of his is taped up on there sometimes. So Gotcha. Awesome. Well, Cody, thank you. Y'all go check out Kentucky Catfishing. He's growing like crazy. He'll be to 1,000 before you know it. And uh, y'all just go check him out. He's trying really hard to get you guys some great content and uh, keep landing in line, man. And don't yeah. don't let him don't <laughs> let him lose no more fish. Hey, he just he hooked a, he broke his PB and now this past weekend he broke it again. So he did get back on there. Yep. Awesome, man. I haven't seen your latest video yet, but you know I'll watch it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Take care. Yep. See you. All right. Bye bye. All right. Still no still no Ryan, but um. I guess we'll bring, we got one more person. I mean, I don't know how much he's going to add to the show. Uh, he's, he fishes a little bit, not really a pro. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Semi pro, kind of. <laughs> Man, you got a whole bunch going on back there, buddy. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I, my conversation is going to be what you can do to kind of cut, kind of customize what you already have. 
Um, I mean, I, I can answer, tell you what I use, <clears throat> but my thing is customizing what I have. Um, one thing that I started doing on pretty much everything that I, that I own, my rods, is painting them with fluorescent paint. And um, it, um, I have painted my, my rods with fluorescent paint. And as a matter of fact, this was my first rod that I painted, right? It was an ugly stick. And um, then I started using black lights. And then I saw how it would appear. I was like, whoa, this, is, this looks absolutely awesome. So I started adding another black light and then I needed to get a, a, a stronger battery. And then I just started, you know, now I'm, I'm up to over five black lights uh, during my show. And um, I can kind of show you, I even paint my, my no, well, this is a, an egg sinker. It's an eight ounce, it's too big, but I even paint, and these are my no rolls that I use. Um, these are primed and painted with, uh, with fluorescent paint. And I just like to do everything different. Um, and, and Dieter the, says, Bill, Billy is no longer his hero. <laughs> Chunky Cats is here. <laughs> 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 I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, um, one really quick, I want to touch really quick because I know I'm 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 a, a visual person. I get asked all the time, "What do I use for primer?" Now, now it's not the best best primer in the world, but this is what I use, and I've been using, and it's been holding up fairly well. The Zinsser Zinsser one two three, and it dries really fast. You give it a couple hours to dry, and then you come back and you you pick your favorite color. Um, I've been using quite a bit of this one from um, from uh, Walmart. It's the red orange. And um, I use this for my main, which is, where are we at? Um, well, anyways, I use the red orange from, from Walmart, and then I use the, the yellow from Home Depot. Um, I noticed that this one looks a little bit better than the, the one Walmart sells. Um, it, it's, it's just a passion I have to go painting everything. And then I started adding also high reflected tape um, to, to my rods on certain areas because the fluorescent paint looks really, really good on the black lights. But when you when you come and show the the, the fish to the camera, um, the ring light, or when I turn and put my other camera on, on the backside and a stronger light, it really illuminates it. Um, as a matter of fact, this had been everyone's favorite rod for many, many, for a lot of months. Uh, this is the first EO head. Um, and you can see how it's high reflective tape and I just kind of cut it thin and twist it all the way around and then I I, I, took, I did the accent on the yellow here. And those that, if you don't want to paint your rods, I mean, I would suggest possibly adding a little bit of fluorescent, I'm sorry, high reflective tape um, to your rods. It would it would do quite a bit if you do night fishing. Um, I, I know that people are gonna say, oh, I, would, I wouldn't waste my time. You know, I break off way too much painting no rolls. I don't break off all that often, believe it or not. At the most, I, I can remember is breaking off twice during one of our shows. Um, I just like doing it just for the show. People get a kick out of it. Yeah, and um, also I even so you started, don't people you don't have to paint your stuff to catch catfish is what he's trying to tell you. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, it, it's all for the show. It's all for the show. Um, I, I even started adding um, high reflective high reflective tape to my uh, spooks. Um, you can see it here. You have the the yellow and then the orange here, just for funny kicks. And then you know you just add your beads. Um, so I'm gonna interrupt you because I, I want you to hold that up. Hold that up. Okay. Because uh, Roger was supposed to come. I don't have any Demon Dragons because uh, I just can't pay the money for him. I just can't. So, y'all, that that he's holding up. He's called it a spook because it's basically a, an old bass lure that they've converted into a catfish slash or catfish rattle slash float. And so, like on the Santee rig, uh, that replaces the peg float that others are using. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and peg floats. You like peg using float. those. Yes. So, I mean, I, I, I really, really like using these spooks. I mean, if I can afford demon dragons, um, I would use demon dragons. But, I mean, you can go sometimes at a big box store, uh, Walmart or Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop, and you can find these spooks for like 2 or $3. And all you do is break off their, their treble hooks. And same thing. No, no different. Um, I mean, it doesn't rattle as loud as a demon dragon, but... It works. No, I, I always add these extra little rattlers anyway. So it's just a lot of fun that I that I have going on. Um, Do you have a whisker seeker rig so people can see that? The I think you have it on that rod right behind you. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're going to give me trouble here. The last time I heard the rod's been flying everywhere. <laughs> All right. Because I think this is this is like the next level up for those of you who you know have the cash and you don't want to make your own stuff. Whisker Seeker makes these packs, and they make these um, these rigs. That he's about to show you. 
So it, it's kind of like a Carolina rig, but the only thing that changes from the Carolina rig is when you add something to suspend your bait up. It could be a peg float or it could be a demon dragon. So um, these here are from, from Whisker Seeker. You, you buy, geez, I can't figure out my hands here. So you buy this piece um, and then you just add, you add the hook to it like that. Um, there's now does it come with that. the does it come with the clip or you have to buy the clip? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I think I think this one does not come with the clip. I I even tried something kind of funny. I tried even to paint my clips and it did not work. Uh, running your hook and everything through it, um, it it, it didn't work. But um, I, I'm always trying something different. And, and and let me just kind of say this real quick. The high reflective tape came from Catfish Dave. Um, I saw one of his videos. He was using silver um uh tape he got it from walmart he was nice enough to respond to me when you know um uh, as, as he was growing and i said you know what i want to do that but i want to take it a step up you know i'm always trying to do something and then see what i can add to my own twist um as a matter of fact um kayak catfishing um uh, started painting his weights um several months back they were red and i saw that but by that time i, I was already painting my rods i'm like you know what Boom, I got to paint my no roll. So, <laughs> you know, you always pick little things from other people. Mm -hmm. So Outdoors Addiction asks, do demon dragons really hold uh, or float heavy bait? That's a great question. A great question. As a matter of fact, there's a, a fantastic video that Dieter Milhorn put out today. And it yep. was very interesting. Very, very interesting. I know he got a little heat saying that he used on his first video he put out it was an actual demon dragon or it was an old version. Now you got the new version and I think they need to check that video. out. Yeah. So, uh, outdoors addiction, go check out Dieter Melhorn's channel. Um, after the show, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> don't leave, don't leave. <laughs> By the way, go hit the thumbs up people. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, I've heard that they hold up a pretty substantial bait. What is that? These are, these are the three black lights that I run oh, on my okay. wagon. Um, it, of course it comes with little, like, I don't know what you call them, like little things that you can screw into your wagon. So I run three of these, I believe they're 25 Watts. Um, but I had a couple of extra ones just kind of wanted to show you most of the stuff that I use. It, it is in my video in the description. Um, and then one last thing is you already saw <clears throat> some of the high reflective tape, the three high reflective tapes that I like to use are, these are the three colors right here, the silver. Um, it goes from, from, well. It, 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 as a matter of fact, it's the, it's the it's the the lime and the orange, um, but the silver has twice as much ref, reflectability back than over the the yellow. So the silver has crazy reflection back to the camera. So you will only see reflection when you have your camera. and You have to have a light source right next to your camera eye. So people think that if they go do all this, it's not going to work unless you have you have it properly set up. Um, but these are the three the three colors that I use. It's but the good but, thing about that reflective tape, especially the silver, is if you're just doing it to see your rods, you don't need black lights. You can just have a not. light. You can have one dedicated light on your boat just shining on the rods, um, and it'll help you see the takedowns better. 100%. And let me just quickly just say, who, who has a very, very nice setup, he started doing it is Bill of Rights. Uh, okay. Bill of Rights. Um, good chance. Yes, his rods are black, and he added some um, something close to this um, silver on certain sections. It, it, I, I absolutely mm -hmm. love it. It looks very, very nice. But yeah, awesome. Chunky man, it's always an honor to have you in here. I appreciate Thank you coming. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Those of you, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that anybody in here doesn't know you, but. If you haven't seen a Chunky Cats fishing live stream, you don't know what you're missing. Um, me and the and the Boom Squad are in there, and <laughs> we have a, we have a great time. And it's not it's not um, it's not uncommon to have people in the live stream for several hours. And you know, we just have a good time. And Chunky's a great host, and he has a lot of fun. Um, so go check it out if you I haven't. I appreciate that. We have a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. Well, God bless you. Have a good night. You too. Take care. See you. Cool. All right, guys. So I have my stuff to go through. People have covered a lot. So, uh, you know, if you've watched the last two, I go kind of quick in this section. So if you have questions, you got to stop me. But uh, quickly, my main line, I use Andy Monster Line 30 pound, the yellow high vis. I like this. I mean, look how. So this has been on the spool, but look how straight that is. 
the the memory or the lack of memory is awesome and it's really smooth um you know the only the only bad thing about it is it's so smooth and and that it doesn't really have a lot of memory that when you spool up a new reel with it if you don't keep tension on it it'll come off the spinning reel um, not so much the the uh, casting reels but uh, i love it a lot of people love it because on amazon it goes out of stock very quickly so I would say that if you want to try it out or you want to keep it, then if you want to keep it in stock to go ahead and get it while it's available, um, they were out for about a month and I got, uh, I got, uh, some new reels. And so I had to get a different brand, but uh, I love it. It's high viz, easy to see uh, great line. It's almost, almost feels like spaghetti when you take it, when, when you hold a strand in your hand. So if you've ever held spaghetti noodles before you cook them, um, that's the kind of, it almost feels brittle until you bend it. And then, you know, it's not brittle. So Andy monster line, 30 pound. Uh, this whole spool was a little over 50 bucks on Amazon. The links in the description, something that people haven't talked about tonight is if you're fishing, sorry for the noise. If you're fishing for catfish, uh, and you want to fish with a float, I have catfish floats here. These are made by uh, Patriot Catfishers of America. Uh, Patriot James, he does a live stream on Wednesday nights. And basically, it's the same principle as a slide float. So um, if you have, if you've ever fished with a rod and reel for brim or bluegill or something, yes, I got the bobbers, Marilla. Um, you have that little yellow string that you put on your line. Then you put the small bead on and you put the big bead on and then you slide this sinker slide onto your line. And then you put your weight under this and then you put a barrel swivel and then you run your leader like you would anything else. Now, the only difference is uh, I use a chain swivel with these because I usually float live bait and I floated live bait and I caught my first fish on a Patriot bobber uh on friday night he uses um these lightning bugs on on top and they light up and these things last forever y'all they really last a long time um there's different brands this is just the one i have i know muddy river catfishing he sells them and his have a piece of pvc in the top that you can use a glow stick and you can pull the glow stick out and replace it this one uh you can pull this out too and replace it but it'll float a massive bait and massive lead. I had a five ounce egg sinker under this and it didn't pull them down. Um, somebody said, I love my pink ones. Well, I like my pink one too. <laughs> somebody bought me a set from Patriot James and uh, I think it was quarantine blues and I really appreciate it. All right, moving right along. I brought my whole tackle box in here, y'all. So uh, I have a, a, uh, sinker kind of like jimmy had earlier except it doesn't have the um, quick release this one is made by junior proctor blue dog fishing uh, i'm gonna try to share these if i can um you know what we don't have time for that if you want to see links i got links to all of my stuff in the description but um basically same thing jimmy had it just drags along and so it'll go over like any logs or debris and won't get hung up as much. Now, don't don't be fooled. These things will get hung up. And that's what Jimmy was saying. His are made with that that um release there. So it releases on 10 pounds of pressure. So uh that's that's that one. It's really long. This one's about uh I think it's an ounce or an ounce and a half. I do have two ounce ones that I buy from my tackle shop. These are basically paracord uh, with ball bearings in them. This is a two ounce and you can see it's kind of made the same way. It's got a swivel, uh, to a snap and that pulls along the same way. These are just shorter. So they're more, uh, likely to get hung up. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate it. Um, my floats three inch peg float, just like you saw earlier today. Um, I use a bunch of different sinkers. For suspending baits, if I don't have a suspended rig pre-made and I have a Carolina rig on, I have I have these big. I hope I don't drop this on the keyboard. 
um, these big eight ounce cannonball sinkers with the eye on it. So I can just clip it to my quick clip. Then I have uh, coin sinkers, just like you saw. This is a chunky version. Chunky, I haven't lost one. I still got, I still got both of them. This is a five ounce. Let's see, what else do I have? Might have to stand up to look in this thing. Uh, here's some hooks. So I have, and I apologize, I had a whole bunch of cool tackle that I don't really use that I hadn't seen tonight. Um, I ordered Dale's tackle. He sent it out immediately, but the post office is having delays with delivering things. So it says it's late. It was supposed to be delivered two days ago. I won't bore you with that. But um, So I went to Walmart. These are a Team Catfish uh, six ounce jackhammer. So kind of like a J hook. So with a J hook, uh, is more common for flathead fishing because the bite isn't as, as pronounced, especially if you're in their area. A lot of people like to set the hook when they see that, that tap, which usually is the flathead sucking in the bait. And a flathead sometimes will suck in the bait and then sit there uh, and it won't move. So if you wait too long, they might spit that bait out. So that's why people use J hooks a lot for, um, for flatheads. Then uh, they have their mighty wide gap. Uh, seven knot hook. Let's see. For my leader line, I'm sorry I'm all over the place. I'm trying to go quickly, and I appreciate all 87 of you being in here. I just switched to reaction tackle for my monofilament. Um, I lost a big fish this summer and, uh, you know, it was my fault. I had a fray leader line, but a buddy of mine, uh, one over outdoors said, you should try reaction tackle. And I love it. I really do. Um, it's about $12 for a, uh, 200 yard spool on Amazon. And what I like about it is most of this mono monofilament leader line is so thick. This is 80 pound test. So it's really hard to manipulate and tie knots with it. It gets all jumbled up. Um, but this one is a lot more flexible. So that's 80 pound monofilament and I can twist it and turn it and it doesn't have a lot of memory. So, uh, you know, that's, that's a great change that I've made and I really like it. I still change my leaders out every other trip, uh, especially if, I, I've, I test them out each trip. After each trip, I uh, run my fingers along the line to see if there's any nicks because I'm not missing another fish because of my own fault. <laughs> All right. As far as the smaller stuff here, I have two different kind, three different kinds of sinker slides. I have the ones from Amazon that Jonathan had, hook, hook catfish. These are great. They're huge. Um, you don't, you can fit any kind of weight on that that you want. I won a gift certificate from catfish weekly about a, this time last year, I think to Macy's fishing finds. And, uh, I got $50 worth of sinker slides. So I still have all of those left. Uh, so that's that one. It's great. It's just like the one from Amazon. It's just smaller. And then this is the one you can get these from Walmart. Thank you, Brian. These are um, the uh, shoot. I forget what they're called. Easy sinker slides by rig wrap. Uh, and these you can take on and off the hook on and off the line. I don't use these as much because I don't have a need to take them off as much, but some people like to run a snap swivel or, or just do different things with them. So they, they run those a lot. As far as beads, I really don't really don't have a preference as long as they're rubber. I just bought a bunch of these little tiny ones, and I run my bead um, on top of my leader line where the weight comes down on the swivel. And then you heard me talk about floats. I run these ball swivels, ball and chain swivels, I guess you call them. And that's because uh, I'll run live bait on them and they have more points of release so that if that bait's swimming around, it can uh, it has a lot more play and it won't twist up your line as much. These are quick clips. If you saw on Chunky Cat's 
hook for that whisker rig. This is what he had the hook uh, attached to the rig with a quick clip. You can get those on Amazon, Dale's Tackle. You can get them on um, Tackle Bandit. Let's see. I only got one or two other things to show y'all. If I can find it. Oh, here we go. These are Versa Rattles. I get these from Dale's Tackle, too. You saw those earlier in the show. You saw the hooks that I use earlier in the show from, from Catfish Clothing. And here's just uh, one of my rigs I'll show you while I have it out. All right, so this is a Santee rig. Thank you, Weekend Angler. I appreciate it. I'll write your name up there in just a minute. Um, there's the uh, catfish clothing hooks. They're also tackling cats hooks. This is a 9 You can see they're offset. Straight shank to the 3-inch peg float. And I run my rattle on top of the uh the float just like someone else said i'm not sure how much they actually work but i use the ones i have to a barrel swivel and so at walmart i just get the biggest barrel swivels they have i don't know what they hold but i've never lost a fish because of a swivel um, and i don't know many people who have so uh that's it that's that all right, I think I think that's about it, y'all. The only other thing that I have to show you is up close is what one other person uses a snap swivel. So if you don't if you don't like the um, the sinker slides, if you don't like your your sinker running up and down your line, you can attach it with one of these, and so you'll clip your your sinker to this. And what it'll do is it'll stay close to your leader. Um, what did he say? He said, uh, Dieter said, if you use a swivel because of because of hook, you're cursed. <laughs> okay. Wow. Thanks, man. Feller, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's that. So, Feller brings up a great transition point, y'all. So, the nominations are over. Um, it is time to vote for your favorite. So weekend angler and I don't know what I do. Feller's already done. So I'll put a check mark and a square around Feller. <laughs> uh, it's time to vote for the nominated people for the, uh, golden whisker awards coming up in december i just put that out today go check it out some of my guests are on there um you'll notice that there's you know some people that we thought would get nominated but uh you know you can't force people to nominate but there's nobody that's nominated that doesn't deserve one of those awards so that's the good thing um you'll notice that on some of those uh, nominations, there's more than three, and that's because there were ties. Some people got, you know, a bunch of people got one nomination or some people got two, uh, and I didn't want to do a tiebreaker or anything like that. So that's why there's uh, several different ones for a category. You can pick one. You have until December 5th, I believe, to, uh, to nominate or to vote. This is the final vote. Uh, vote for your favorite. And then on December 19th, that's Saturday, December 19th at 7.30, right here on Palmetto Cats Live, we will have the award show. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have people coming to uh, present awards, uh, maybe some of the same people in here. You know, there's going to be big channels represented, small channels represented. It's awesome. I, I can't wait to have it. But we need you to vote. We need to see these numbers go up. And I can already tell you that we've already got 30 votes within the, the first six hours of putting it up. So that's awesome. Jason said, I voted myself. Thank you. Uh, have a URL for the hooks. 
Palmetto, yes. If you check the description, I put a link to Catfish's website, Catfish Clothing's website. You can go check those out. Thank you, Peel and Drag. Thank you for coming on the show, man. I, I was really honored to have you on the show. Thank you for all the wonderful comments you guys are bringing in. Um, Y'all, I'm blessed. I'm always blessed to to do this show. And you know, I I say it every week, every weekend, that I'm just thankful that God gives me this outlet to, to meet people and to share my love for him and just to uh, interact with you guys. What, what did he say? Palmetto Cast doesn't know it, but I'm coming to his house that night to help. Come on down, brother. I got an extra bedroom. <laughs> but uh, and those of you who are wondering, there was a creator uh, version, and I haven't got that one done yet. But those votes I will send out to creators only. If, you're, if you didn't get the creator nomination form is because i didn't have you on facebook i couldn't find your email anywhere so if you want to vote for creators the nominations are over unfortunately um but you can send me your email address and you can vote for other creators and we have awards for that as well uh let's see i don't want to miss anything bring your appetite those two know how to cook yep uh, let's see, Jackie Vaughn, great show. I'll be sure to tune in more often. Thanks for coming, Jackie. Uh, welcome to the channel. Um, if you have YouTube, go on over there and check us out on YouTube. Hey, Chad, how you doing? Yeah, I, and I, you know, I don't know. I want the series to continue, so I'm thinking about doing one on boats. Uh, I know that we have some bank fishermen in here, but I would like to do a live show about boats and what your boat is and why you like that boat and why you would recommend it or not recommend it. Same as for engines, so like a boat engine type show. So if you think that would be awesome, put it in the comments. Email me if you'd like to be on that show about the boats. Uh, I want to continue series like this. I, I want to continue this, um, and, and I just want to make it something that's so informative uh, that everyone can benefit from it, not just those of us who do YouTube or, or those of us who catfish on the regular. I want new people to be able to access this. So anyway, y'all, it's a it's been an hour and 37 minutes. I got 68 people in here. Make sure you hit the thumbs up before you go out. I really appreciate it. Um, as always on the Palmetto Cats live stream, I'm going to pray us out. Uh, please stay in. Uh, uh, if you don't pray, that's fine, but I, I would appreciate you uh, giving us your thoughts. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for another great show and a series of shows that, Lord, just brings the passion for fishing to more people. I thank you for the pe my guests that have come in here. Lord, I ask that you bless them. I ask that you bless all the people in chat, those who are active and those who are just sitting back and enjoying the show. Lord, I thank you for this country that we're allowed to do this, that we can uh, talk to people around the world about things that we love. Uh, Lord, I thank you for this country also that we have the opportunity to, to pick our leaders and, and we don't have a dictatorship over us, Lord, and we're not persecuted. So I'm very thankful for that, Lord. I pray for everyone that's voted. I pray for everyone that's going to go vote for our next president. And I pray that they would do their research, Lord, and they would vote. Uh, vote their ideas and beliefs. Uh, and Lord, I just pray for whoever takes that office that they would uh, continue to make our country thrive and bring us all together. Lord, I thank you again for this channel where I can share my love for you. Without you, I'm nothing. And I just want to lift you up. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, what did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy. Y'all, if you haven't checked it out, uh, I'm sure, man, this is probably old news now, but uh, Muddy River Catfishing and Catfishing Carp got together this past week and uh, did some fishing and, and hanging out. And I think it's really interesting to see both of them because I watched both of the videos from both perspectives, and it's interesting to see how they do things uh, from the other person's camera. So you see how Luke is filming stuff and you see how Chris is filming stuff. Go check it out. It's interesting. It really is. All right, y'all. Love you. God bless. Happy fishing. We'll see you next time. Go vote for your president. Go vote for Golden Whiskers. Good night, y'all. <laughs>